In the last video, we looked at how to use trig ratios to determine some side lengths if we knew some angles. Uh, here you see two triangles where we know a couple of the sides. Um, and what we're actually most interested in is figuring out some of the angles inside the triangles. Of course, we know, you know, these are 90 degree angles. Um, and um, even without using trig, we could, you know, use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the other side, but um, that's so grade school. It's, uh, it's time to start using trig. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is I think I'm going to ask that we find what is angle D, right? So um, we're looking for angle D. And uh, we're looking at this triangle that D is a part of, and we're saying, okay, well, we know two of these sides. And in regards to, or in relationship to this angle, which sides do we know? Well, we know the adjacent side, and we know the uh, hypotenuse side, and of course, uh, we're thinking so katoa, which of sine, cos, and tan um, uses the adjacent and opposite side? Well, it's, of course, tan. So we're going to set up a tan ratio, right? We should also always set it up with everything we know. Tan D equals, of course, opposite over adjacent. So in this case, it will be 2 over 5, right? And so I'm going to um, maybe first convert that to a decimal, 0 0.4. And then I would pull up my calculator. And um, I would have to do something to get D by itself, right? Um, I have D here on this side, and I just want to know what... Eventually, I want to know what D equals. Um, so I'm going to have to somehow remove this tan. Well, how do you untan something? Well, it's kind of the same way, right, as asking if I knew that x squared equaled uh, 4. How would I unsquare the x? Well, I'd square root it, right? So we're going to perform the same kind of idea here. We need to untan this side. Well, we're going to untan it by taking the inverse tan of tan D. Right? And so the inverse tan of a tan is nothing. And we're actually going to be left with what D equals. Right? And, but of course, if we do the inverse tan of the left-hand side of the equation, we have to take the inverse tan of the right-hand side of our equation. So that means D is going to equal the inverse tan of 0 0.4. Well, what's this inverse tan? Well, if you look carefully on your calculator, right above the tan, there is, a t looks like tan to the negative 1, right? That's inverse tan. So what you're going to do on your calculator is, if you've got an old school one, you're going to do 0.4. You're going to hit second function to get uh, up here and then hit uh, inverse tan, right? If you have a newer type calculator, you'll probably do the inverse tan first, second function tan, uh, 0 0.4 to, to figure that out. So punch that in. Let's see, I got... Uh, 0.4 second function tan, and I get that D uh, on my calculator tells it my, that it must be actually 21.8 degrees. So let me get my calculator out of the way and see if that number actually makes kind of sense. Would I believe it if uh, I was told that this angle here was 21.8 degrees? And I think I would. That looks around like 21 degrees. So maybe I will next see if in this bigger triangle. I can figure out what angle A is. All right. Well, in this bigger triangle, I have the side that is opposite to A, and I have the side that is hypotenuse in this triangle. So I think uh, you needing opposite and hypotenuse together, I will probably be working with the sine ratio. So I will set this up and say I am finding the sine of A, and I know that it will equal the opposite side, 27, over the hypotenuse side, which is 20, uh, 42. <laughs> now, I've deliberately chosen a couple of numbers that shouldn't give me a beautiful, uh, nice, even decimal. Um, so sine A is approximately, uh, let's see what 27 divided by 42 is, um, 0 0.643, right? Now, for accuracy, I never... Um, erase that number from my calculator. I, I leave it like as 0 0.64285714143. I don't have to write them all down because my calculator will keep them for me. Uh, but for accuracy, right, I know I'd never reduce it down to just three decimals. I want a nice uh, accurate answer. So I now have to take the uh, inverse sine of both sides, right, and uh, you don't have to write this out every time. Um, 
if you just take the next step and just uh, go from sine A to A and remember that you can do that by taking the inverse sine of that other number. Um, well, it looks, looks pretty nice. 40.0 degrees. That's still rounded. And is that about 40.0 degrees? Um, yeah, I think that works pretty well. So again, I, I'm writing it in right now, writing the inverse sign in as a reminder of what to do on my calculator to hit the second function sign, right? I'm always gonna use the inverse sign when I'm either, whenever I'm looking for, a, uh, for an angle, right? Anytime I'm solving for an angle along the way, I'm, on, I'm going to have to use the inverse sign. So yeah, you don't have to write it down every time, but I'm doing it just for now. Uh, let's do one last one. We know, I think, at this point, what C should work out to be, but just for practice, let's give it a shot. Um, pretend we don't know what A is yet. If we're looking for angle C, then um, using what we know about this triangle, which is the adjacent side and the opposite side, I think we would set up a cos ratio. So cos of C equals uh, adjacent 27 over 42. Right? And um, one another way of looking at it is without putting it into a decimal form, I could actually take the inverse cos of both sides. Um, I'll do it in red. Cos negative one of this, cos negative one of that side. And so I end up with an expression that reads like this, that C equals the inverse cos of 21 over 42, right? Depending on what your calculator does or how comfortable with your calculator is, maybe you don't even want to bother doing the division. You just want to enter in a fraction, and that should work just as well. Uh, so if I ask my calculator, what is, now again, I have, um, if I use the fraction button, 27 over 42, and oh, look, that's a, uh, actually, my calculator reminds me that in lowest terms, that is 9 over 14. And if I actually ask my calculator, what's the inverse cos of 9 over 14? Inverse cos on my calculator is uh, C equals 49.99. So um, 49.99 degrees if I round it to two decimal places, right? And that makes sense. It looks 49.99, which means that if I had rounded this one to two decimals, it should have probably rounded to 40.01. But there we go. Um, using trig ratios to determine uh, some angles. In your homework and on tests you will see a familiar instruction like solve this triangle which means that you need to find all of the unknown information so I would say that the inf unknown inf information we have here is one side and two angles. Right. So um, this would be a good place for you to practice maybe um, don't let uh, don't watch the answer or the solution until you've tried it so I would I would encourage you first to um, find some angles maybe we want to name this thing first we'll name this call this X Y and Z um, and so I would find psi or angle Y or angle X first perhaps and so I would look at this and I would say hmm which ratio should I use so why don't you try and solve it? Solve this triangle, first of all, for angle X. Of course, once you've found uh, one angle inside a right angle triangle, uh, please don't, you don't have to use uh, trig to find this one, right? Because you know that the three angles always add up to 90 or 180 degrees. So uh, it's a quick, um, quick uh, finding out the other one. So therefore, y equals uh, 72.9 degrees. Now, you could find the length of the hypotenuse using uh, Pythagorean theorem, but again, that's so grade school. Uh, why don't we use trig to find it? Um, and we have our choice of angles to use. I'm just gonna use, arbitrarily choose um, 
Oh, I just noticed that I wrote in Y. This, of course, is angle Z. Um, so, sorry, why don't I use angle Z to find the hypotenuse, right? And I could, again, I could use, I have a choice. I could use cos of Z or I could use sine of Z. Um, I feel like using sine of Z. So, sine of Z is, of course, um, the opposite over hypotenuse. So, I'm going to fill in, actually, that it, Z is sine of 72.9 degrees. Now again, I'm, I haven't erased that number from my calculator. I still have 72.89727103. I like accuracy, so that's the number I'm using in my calculations. Um, uh, and I would encourage you to do the same, not to use 72.9, but to use that whole long number. Uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so 23.4 over the hypotenuse. Um, Generally, we would name the side opposite to an angle with its small letter. So I'm going to solve for y. y, multiply both sides by y, right? This is just cross multiplying. Sine of 72.9, right? Really 0.89727, but uh, that's why you use your answer button or you keep it on your calculator. And punch it in my calculator. And I think, uh, let's see, sine of that over and then times 23.4. Uh, I get that y must be approximately 24.48 long, 24.48. And uh, I, as always, I check my numbers, right? Does this look like a 17 degree angle? Does that look like a 73 degree angle? Does this look like it could be 24 and a half long? And I think these are all reasonable answers. So. Um, now you know how to solve for sides, right? From the previous video, you know how to solve from angles, solve for angles from this video. And of course, uh, you put all that together and you can solve any right angle triangle as long as you have at least two pieces of information.